Well, if you uh, like underdogs, if you like miracle wins, like anything like that, you're not going to want to watch the main event of UFC 190 because Ronda Rousey is probably going to just tear Betcha Cahaya's arm off. And if she doesn't, well, she'll probably still beat Cahaya to a absolute pulp. Mercifully, UFC 190 has a lot of other pretty good fights that will kind of make up for the fact that the main event could very well be a, or actually I should say, almost guaranteed to be a one-sided ass-kicking. Yeah. Well, there's also one other thing that can make it feel better for you. That's winning money in fantasy MMA. Wipe the question marks out of your eyes and let me explain. I'm talking about CounterMove Fancy MMA at CounterMove.com. Wipe the rest of the question marks out of your eyes. Let me explain. CounterMove Fancy MMA works a lot like those fancy football leagues where you pay, you pay in, you set up a team. And if your team scores the most points, you win money. It works very much like that. And just like the, most of those leagues, or I should hope all of those leagues, is 100% legal. And the last two times I did videos, I've actually won pretty big. So I'm starting to feel more confident about my picking abilities. So let me explain how Counter Move Fantasy MMA works because, hey, you might be interested and you may want to win some money too. May want to. Of course you want to. The first thing you do is you go to Counter Move. <clears throat> you go to CounterMove.com and you select a game. There are free games. There are extremely expensive games. There's games that are five dollars to get in, twenty-five dollars to get in. But basically, there's games. And there's all sorts of payouts. Some of them, the top 42 spots pay out. And the top prize, and I know one of them, is at least a thousand bucks. And even if you're the 42nd best picker, you're still going to win money in this. In some of these games. But basically, just pick a game. Once you pick a game, you go to the fighter selection screen. You will have a imaginary salary cap of $25,000 with which you'll need to pick five fighters. You'll have to stay within your budget, of course. Now what we want how <clears throat> Now, the scoring for these the one thing I haven't got a hand of is doing these videos. The scoring is based on significant strikes Takedowns, knockdowns, dominant positions, submission attempts, and rounds one. But what we really want are finishes. First round finishes, 100 point bonus. Second round finishes, 75 point bonus. Third, fourth, and fifth round finishes, 50 point bonus. So basically what we want are finishes and we want them as soon as possible. Once you pick your team of five fighters, hit play now, and you're good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my pick. Actually, I'm going to give you a rundown of UFC 190, and I'm going to give you my picks, and also give you my recommendations as far as counter move. Once again, we want finishes. We want them fast. And remember, I did pretty damn good the last two times I did videos. So... I'm not an expert yet, but I'm getting there. Let's get this shoe on the road. I gotta scroll all the way up to the top of my... Go up, you stupid WordPad document. Uno momento. Here we go. Bing, yeah, shut up. Here we go. First off, we have Hugo Viana versus Guido Canetti. Viana is 8-2 with only a 30% finish rate. One of those finishes was in the first round. 
he's an extremely decision heavy fighter and he's also been KO'd by a couple of very top level bantamweights named Aljamain Sterling and uh, some other guy, I think his name is like Dillashaw or something like that. Anyway, Kennedy is 6-2, and two. he has a 100% finish rate, 6 first round finishes, but he has not fought as good a level of competition as Viana. This is a toss up. I'm really not interested in this fight. If I had to pick, I'd probably say Kennedy, but Viana has fought a better level of competition. If I had to pick, I'd probably say Viana. If you really need some uh, salary cap room for your counter move team, Kennedy wouldn't be a bad choice, but honestly, skip this fight. It, this one's not even remotely worth it. Next, we have Vitor Miranda versus Clint Hester. Vitor Miranda is 10 and 4 with a 90% finish rate, 8 in the first round. His nickname is Lex Luthor, and that's terrible. He won his last fight by knockout, but he's but an interesting fact, he's lost twice to a certain guy named Fabio Maldonado. Miranda also took all 40 cakes. Clint Hester is 11 and 4 with a 73% finish rate, 3 in the first round, and he's a fairly decent level middleweight. Came from the Ultimate Fighter season, coached by John Jones and Chael Sonnen, which is a very good season, I might add. This one's a toss-up for me. I, If I were to pick, I'd say Miranda. I think he would take the 40 cakes. Again, that would be terrible. But it wouldn't surprise me if Hester were to pull off. I think what would be a mild upset. So, I'm probably skipping this fight because it's just too close to call. But if I'm picking, I'm going with the Tormoranda. Next, we have Yuri Alcantara versus Leon Leandro Essa. I can't even pronounce that name right. Uh, shame on me. Alcantara is 31 and 6 with one no contest. He has an 81% finish rate, 19 in the first round. He has fought a very wide range of fighters for a long time in the sport, and he's extremely hard to put away. Issa is, or Issa, I have no idea how to pronounce his name, is 13 and 4 with a 75, wrong, 77% finish rate. Six first round finishes, but none since 2010. He has not fought anywhere near the same level of competition as Alcantara has, and all of his losses have been finishes. I like Alcantara in this matchup. I think he is very much good enough to beat this other guy whose name I last name I am not going to try to pronounce again. I like him at 5300 he's expensive but I did manage to wean it a bit on my team because I think he's worth putting on. I like Alcantara. I think he will finish. I think you want him on your team. Yes, he is $5300 but you I think you need to Make a little bit of adjustment if you have to, so you can afford him. I think he's worth the price. Next, we have Varley Alves versus Nordin Taleb. Alves is undefeated, 8-0. He has an 80, or excuse me, 63% finish rate, three in the first round. But he's fought very subpar competition, with one exception. That was his last fight against Alan Juban. Many people thought Juban won that fight, but Alves got a split decision victory out of it. Taleb is 11 and 2. He has a only a 45% finish rate, all of them knockouts. Two first round finishes, but none since 2011. And he has also not fought very good competition. This fight could very if this fight were in America, I'm pretty sure the crowd would be bored to death. As it is, Alves is gonna definitely have hometown. Or home country support, but I can I think this goes to a decision. This is gonna suck. I ain't gonna lie to you, it's gonna suck. I will skip this fight, but I think Alves wins. Next we have Rafael Cavalcante versus Patrick Cummins. Cavalcante is 12 and 5 with one no contest. He has a 100 percent finish rate, seven in the first round. He's fought a very wide array of talent in Strike Force and UFC, but against Better competition, he's had mixed results. Patrick Cummins is 7-2 with a 72% finish rate. Four first round finishes, but those were against very weak competition. And better fighters have 
knocked him out, including his last fight against Ovin St. Pro. I really like Cavalcante, and he is cheap. 4700 I think he wins. I think he wins big. I think he will not come out. Really, it, if the OSP fight showed anything, it's that one well-placed shot can easily fell Cummins. I like Cavalcante, and at 4700 I think he is a very good value to have on a counter-move team. Next, we have Damian Maya versus Neil Magny. Maya is a former middleweight title contender. He is 20 and 6 with a 60% finish rate, 10 in the first round. Has fought literally everyone there is to fight in the UFC. He's only been finished once, but that was a first round finish. Magni is 15 and 3 with a 53% finish rate, none in the first round. Twice been submitted, including one first round submission, but he is on a seven fight winning streak. This is a toss up. Maya has the experience. I think he has the ability to beat Magni, but Magni is on a roll right now. It would not surprise me if he wins. This is way too close to call. I've been going back and forth on this fight in my mind. I can't pick. I have no idea who to pick. I'm going to skip this fight because it's just that close. I can't risk it. Next, we kick off the main card as Jessica Aguilar makes her debut against Claudia Gadelha. I probably butchered that last name. Aguilar is 19-4 with a 63, or excuse me, 53% finish rate. Six in the first round, and she has fought a very good level of competition. She's also the former women's strongweight champion at World Series of Fighting. Gadelha is 12-1 with a 67% finish rate. Five in the first round. She has fought very good fighters as well. Her only loss is a razor thin split decision to the woman who is the current strawweight women's champion, Joanna Yadrachek. This is another close one. I like Gadelha Gide in this, but it would not surprise me if Aguilar were to win in her debut. It's a toss up. If I'm if I were to pick, I'd say get a. I would say Gadelha. I think someone's getting finished regardless. I well, actually, I shouldn't say that. I would say if Gadelha wins, it will be probably a finish. It is way too close for me to call, though. Well, this is turning a recurring theme on this card. I'm gonna skip it because it is, in fact, that close. Next up, we have Soa Palele versus Antonio Silva. We have the Hulk versus Bigfoot batting down the hatches. Palele is 22 and 4 with an 82% finish rate, 16 in the first round, but he hasn't fought the a very strong level of competition. Bigfoot is 18-7 and 1. He has a an 89% finish rate, 12 in the first round. He's fought a wide variety of heavyweights around the world, but six knockout losses in the first round, including three straight, not counting the draw against Mark Hunt. A lot has been made of the fact that Bigfoot Silva, for health reasons, probably should be on TRT. But even before the TRT ban, it was clear he was going downhill. I mean, Cain Velasquez brutalized him twice. And... The last couple knockouts he's gotten have been just absolutely devastating. At forty, at forty-seven or excuse me, forty-nine hundred, Palele is not a bad value. I think somebody's getting finished in this fight. If I had to pick, though, I'm going with the Hulk. I think he's more than likely going to knock out Bigfoot Silva, probably send Bigfoot into retirement. I like the Hulk at forty-nine hundred. And considering Bigfoot Silva's recent track record as far as knockouts go, I think that's a very safe pick for your counter move team. It's a near lock. Next, we have Stefan Skyscraper Struve against Antonio Rodrigo Minotoro Nogueira. Struve is 25 and 7. He has an, a 72% finish rate. Gotta reread that number. What the heck? 92% finish rate. 
I really should be wearing my glasses for this. 15 in the first round. He has been knocked out six times, five of those in the first round, and he struggles against better fighters. Minotauro is 34 9 and 1 with one no contest. He has a 71% finish rate. Most of those are submissions. 14 first round finishes, but he has fought for a very long time in Pride and in the UFC. Two losses. In round one by knockout, including a brutal shot from Roy Nelson. And he's not even close to the same Minotauro Noguera as he was in his prime or even a few years ago. This is not the same Minotauro Noguera. The Minotauro from 2011-2012 maybe would have had a chance against Stefan Struve. Not here. Struve, to be honest, is more of a submission fighter, but he has knockout ability. He knocked out Stipe Miocic. Something to note. At 4,400, I think Stefan Struve, for all his problems, and he has a very weak chin. He has an extremely weak chin. But at this stage in, the, in Minotauro Nogueira's career, I think... If anyone's getting knocked out, it will be Nagara. I think Struve wins this. I think he will knock out Minotauro. This is not going to be a good night for some of the for some of the fighters from Brazil. Let me tell you that right now. I'm sorry, Brazil fans. At 4,400, Struve is also an extremely solid value for a counter roof team. I do think he will knock out Minotauro. At 4,400, I think that is a safe pick again to make. I think he's worth it. Very cheap, and again, there's a good chance of a finish He's from Stefan Struve, so he will be my pick. <clears throat> Next, we're going to have two names I'm going to butcher, because I did not watch Season 4 of Ultimate Fire Brazil. We have Delano Lopez versus Reginaldo Vieira. Lopez is 18-1 with a 84, no, 94% finish rate. 12 in the first round. Vieira is. I forgot to write down Vieira's um, record. I'm an idiot. Anyway, he has a 75% finish rate, 8 in the first round. So he's had at least 8 fights that he's won. And I now feel like a complete fool because I didn't write anything down for that. Anyway, uh, I didn't watch season 4. Of Ultimate Fire Brazil, so I have no idea what these fighters are like. If I'm picking, probably Lopez, but at 5,300, that's a little expensive, so I will. And again, I have no idea anything about these two fighters, so I will skip that. Next, we have two fighters who I actually wrote down everything on. We have Fernando Bruno versus Glacio Franca. Bruno is 15 and 2, he has a 53% finish rate, all submissions. Four of those in the first round. Franca is 12 and 3. He has a very nice 94. I must have misread that when I was typing. 94% finish rate. Seven in the first round. I really should wear my glasses when I write things anymore. I guess if I had to pick, I'd probably say Franca. I but again, didn't watch season four of Ultimate Fire Brazil. Probably going to be closer than I think. I'm going to skip this fight, and I'm going to feel like an idiot in the process. Next, we have a battle of two veterans. We have Shogun Hua versus Antonio Ruggiero Nogueira. Shogun is the former UFC light heavyweight champion. He is 22 with 10 with a 91% finish rate. 17 in the first round. He's fought and defeated everyone there is to fight in the entire sport. UFC, Pride, Wherever else he's been. Unfortunately, he is on the downward end of his career. Four of his last five were losses, including twice in the first round, including a nightmarish knockout at the hands of Ovin St. Pro. Little Nog is 21 and 6. He has a 58%. Yes, I'm reading that right. 58% finish rate. Oh dear God, I should have worn my glasses. Anyway, seven finishes in the first round. He has also fought a wide range of fighters, but he's declining significantly worse at this point than Shogun Hua has, and he was 
brutally KO'd by Anthony Johnson in his last fight, which was over a year ago. This is not going to be a pleasant fight. I think someone's getting finished. To be honest, I think the man who will do the finishing is Mauricio Shogun Hua. I think he will get the knockout. I think he will get it early. I think he will get it big. The one catch here is he's $5,400. I was able to work out so I could put him on my team. But he, but considering that there's a possibility that a little nog could be the one that knocks him out. It's up to you whether you want to put him on your team or not. I do think you want one of these guys because I think this will end in a knockout. But if I'm picking, I think the sharp thing is Shogun Hua. I think he will get the knockout. He is expensive at $5,400, but I do think he's worth it. And finally, we have our main event, Ronda Rousey versus Becha Cohea. Rousey, we all know who Ronda Rousey is. There's not much else you can say about her. She's 11 and, she's undefeated, 11-0, 100% finish rate. All but two of those were submissions. 10 of those wins were in the first round, and she gets better every fight. I mean, have you seen the last three she's had? Took a little, I think a little over a minute to beat Sarah McMahon. Took about 18 seconds to beat Alexis Davis, and took even less than that to beat Kat Zingano. She's a nightmare. Becha Cohea is also undefeated, but she only has a 22% finish rate. None in the first round. She's also fought decent competition. But if you've followed MMA news and you've heard about some of the things she said about Ronda Rousey, she may have pushed Ronda a little too far. I I'm not going to lie to you. Ronda's going to win this. Let's just say it right now. I think she fit she goes out there. She's going to brutalize Correa and she beats her in the first round. But I can't put her on my counter move team. Because Ronda Rousey is $6,000. I'll give you a couple minutes to clean off the coffee or whatever that you just spat all over your keyboard in shock. Or you can just listen to me talk while you clean it up. $6,000. I'm not lying to you. Ronda's going to be that expensive on this card. It would take a miracle of source for someone to be able to put up enough space on their team that they could easily put Ronda on. If you're able to do it, more power to you. But I I can't do it, and I very like I'm very sure few people are gonna do it as well. So six thousand. Oh my god. Oh boy. Anyway, so I just ran down the card. I just made a fool of myself. I'll do better for UFC 191. But anyway, now you've heard what I have to say. It's time for you to make your picks. Pick who you want. I don't care. My picks are going to be Yuri Alcantara, Javier Cavalcante, Soa the Hulk Pele, Stefan Skyscraper Struve, and Mauricio Shogun Hua. Struve, Cavalcante, and Palele are all under 5,000. Struve is well under 5,000. So doing this, I was able to get two very high-end fighters in Alcantara and Shogun Hua. So that's my team. So once you pick your fighters, hit the play now button. And from now until the start of fight night, if you suddenly wake up and think, my God, I don't want Shogun, I want Little Nog, or my God, I want both Nogara brothers on my team, or my God, did he just say he didn't watch Ultimate Fighter Brazil Season 4? Or, my God, why is he saying my God a lot? Something else to be wrong with his picks. Go ahead and change your picks. From now until start fight night, go ahead and do whatever you want with your team.
like I said, last two times I did videos, I did very well. Very, very well. Very, 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 very well. And if you play Counter Move Fantasy MMA at countermove.com for UFC 190, you very well could too. So hopefully I was of some help to you. And if not, well, I'm sorry. It's not like my UFC 187 picks were perfect, which they weren't. So, Counter Move Fantasy MMA at countermove.com. What are you waiting for? Do it today. In fact, do it now. As soon as this video is done, go on there. Do it faster than, faster than that even. Just do it. Do it now. Get to the counter move. Sorry. It's, a, it's, it's late. I need to get to bed. Anyway, until next time, I'm Gus Richland. And uh, 